Good morning. morning. Welcome to Wellspring. Good to see all of you here. My name is Edward Burlbaugh. I'm part of your Sunday, June 11th, 2023 service team. We have a few announcements. First, Early Bird is meeting and continues to meet at 9.30. Uh, we have a Zoom link on our website, but we also have three or four stations here that you can come and uh, attend in person if you so choose. All right, our upcoming speakers for June. We have today, Reverend Sandy Scott. And next weekend, Father's Day, we have Bram Watkins. And then the 25th, we have Randy Granger. And then we move on to July, which I'll be speaking on the first Sunday that we know of so far. Uh, this Wednesday, the Lunch Bunch meets at Cracker Barrel. Are we having technical difficulties? Well, you heard most of this already. All right, we meet at 11.30 on Wednesday. All are welcome for Lunch Bunch. And the uh, same day is the Board of Trustees meeting at 6.30, and we do meet on Zoom. And if you would like to attend, because all in the community are welcome, just let me know and I'll get you uh, the, the Zoom link for that. Our Thursday evening group uh, meets every Thursday at 7 p.m. And each week we have a different speaker with a lively discussion afterward. And this week we will be listening to uh, a talk by Michael Beckwith. If you want to join that group, let me know or Cleona for the link. We also meet in the social hall. Sometimes we have three or four folks here and another group on Zoom. Uh, that group on Zoom is made up typically of folks from uh, Kansas City and Phoenix, for example. So uh, thank goodness for Zoom technology. It allows uh, certain things to happen that we didn't do before. All right, our New Thought Ladies Luncheon, which is, uh, as you know, the ladies of the uh, New Thought group here in Las Cruces meet uh, Thursday, June 22nd, 1130 at CSL. Somewhat like a potluck, I understand. Uh, Wellspring's June get together is a meal out at Ruby Tuesdays, 1230 after church on Sunday the 25th. There is a sign up sheet in the social hall because we will make reservations. And lastly, our prayer team remains ready to serve and support you. You may submit a prayer request via our webpage or you can give it to me and I'll uh, take care of uh, making sure our prayer team uh, prays with you on that. We meet virtually Tuesdays at 415 and you may even consider sitting in your quiet space during that time to uh, feel the energy of prayer because we know that that spirit knows no boundaries in the physical realm. So now for our invocation. Oh, so we come together this morning and we just release everything that has transpired before this very instant. We know that in this instant, in this place, and this now, spirit is. Spirit fills this room, including every participant on Zoom. Each of us may feel that in our own way. So we know that we are doing the work of spirit. Spirit is doing the work through us. So we give thanks for this morning. We know that just the right words will be spoken by Reverend Sandy. Just the right music will be heard and participated in by everyone. The talents of our singers, our musicians, is such a blessing. And we know that all is well in the kingdom. And so it is. So please stand if you are able for our song of joy. And I guess uh, Barry has a few words to say about this. Yes, yeah, so this is the song that Doug and we did last week for the song of joy. 
And uh, I'm one of those people who can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So <laughs> I'm, have to, I'm gonna play through the entire song once, just the melody so everybody hears it. And then uh, the second time that I start it, uh, you will start singing the song. And we'll do it three, I think four verses. So you're gonna give us a strong nod when we when it's time to come I'm in. actually going to stop at the end, give a nod, and then we start. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we clear? Okay, we yes. have two people that have sung it. Yes. Well, actually, all of you have sung it, I think, at one point. Okay, well, we'll try to get this squared away. But if nothing else, remember, we've got several more Sundays we can <laughs> practice this, right? So that's good. Oh, Doug, oh, then we have a third version next week, right? Okay, so uh, please uh, read with me our vision, mission, and affirmation. And it's also on this sheet of paper that gets handed out if you have trouble seeing this because I'm standing in your way, perhaps. Uh, okay. Our vision, to elevate spiritual consciousness in our world. Our mission, to support individual spiritual quests through celebration, study, counsel, loving fellowship, and service. And our affirmation, today I pause to reflect, know the divinity that is at my core. I feel the divine flowing through me and filling every part of my being to overflowing with love, joy, peace, wisdom, and abundance. Of this I am grateful, and so it is. All right, it, we, it is now time for our guest music. Teresa Taduri. Such a pleasure to be here uh, for all, so many reasons. I always love playing here, but today a dear friend is is speaking, and I'm so excited about that. So I have a, a song for Sandy at the second part, and this is a song for us all now, which I I got to do earlier for Jennifer. So 
It's just so incestuous, these are around here. <laughs> um, sun is pouring through the trees. The lark is singing from her perch. The scent of spring is on the breeze. It's Sunday, and this forest is my church. Here in these woods, alone and apart from the world, troubles and cares I can see with my eyes feel with my heart that your love is everywhere oh you who drapes the meadow you who paints the dawn help me now and all my fellows to remember that God in us is one. It's as though I'd awoken from a dream. See clearly at last that now is the only time that we have. Leave the fear, leave regret to the past. And to you who drapes the meadow, you who pain. The dawn help me now and all my fellows to remember that God in us is one. Thank you for this beautiful day, the joys the losses, the gains. And when my life finally slips away, may it be only love that remains. Oh, you who paints the meadow, you who dreams, the dawn help me now and all my fellows to remember that God in us is one help me now and all my fellows to remember God in us is one. Thank you, Teresa. Now we have our reading, and today I'm going to read from This Thing Called You by Ernest Holmes. And this is the first part of chapter four. The universe is one vast system. All the laws of nature conspire to benefit mankind, but these same laws automatically protect the integrity of nature. It is as though nature said, all right, little man, the game is yours. Play it as you see fit. 
I am going to serve you, but don't fool yourself. I am going to reflect right back to you with exactness what you really are. If you don't like what is happening, I'm not going to be disturbed. You are the arbiter of your fate. You are the captain of your soul. I have given you all. I have implanted freedom, individuality, and self-choice within you. Finally, through experience, you will learn the better and wiser way. I am love as well as law, beauty as well as reason, feeling as well as intellect. You are set upon the path of self-determination. Your fantastic will, seeking good for yourself that you would not willingly give to others, may lead you up many blind alleys. You may meet with disappointment and chagrin, but I've also placed within you a compass and a chart. There is a course you may pursue which leads to happiness, to wholeness, to peace of mind and joy. Someday you will follow this path because I have placed a spirit within you which is ever seeking to guide, ever standing aside, permitting you partially to obliterate that spark which is a part of myself. Through all the rounds of experience, I am there. Someday, when you sit down by the roadside, weary with struggle, you will listen deeply and you will hear a voice saying, this is the path, follow it. Even then I shall wait, for you are you, and you cannot return to your father's house other than as a complete and perfect individualization of myself. Always I will be waiting. I shall not reproach you when you return. You will be welcome. The time of your return is your own decision. It may be now or at any time in the vast forever which stretches before you. So now it gives me joy to introduce Reverend Sandy Scott to this morning's service. Thank you, Edward. That was beautiful. Well, hello there, everybody. Everybody on the camera. We're all here together. There's no distance in the heart or spirit. So um, thank you for having me. Uh, uh, it's just like last time when I walked in uh, social hall. It was so peaceful and so pretty. <laughs> you two just beaming. M musicians really have that joy, don't they? It's like you're beaming. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see everybody. I've known Jennifer for 20 years, Terry for nine. Amy for eight, and uh, Teresa since 1985 in L.A. during the AIDS days, and she helped me survive with her. Some of her songs that she's written are some of the most hilarious songs, and to be able to laugh in the midst of it was really a gift, plus, you know, what fun you are. So um, today's about Let It Be is, is the topic. Um, I love that song. Those three words have guided me since the 70s. Um, I, I, it, it, it changed a lot. When it first came out, uh, I was working in a sheltered workshop with handicapped adults, and there were two um, recovering heroin addicts, Helen and Bill, and they were a couple. And the people, we, they were severely handicapped adults. I don't know what we call them now, but they were severely um, limited in their life and they loved Helen and Bill because they were happy. They were so glad to be free of addiction and they loved everybody and everybody loved them. And they lived on a houseboat in Sausalito and their landlord kicked them out and wouldn't let them wait till after the storm and they died. They drowned with their family. Um, so I was devastated and the people in the workshop were just in hysterics and just couldn't figure out how to comfort them. And then this song came out, Let It Be. And it was just somehow, some way it broke through my hardened shell of grief and not being able to accept it. Because acceptance is powerful. It's a powerful tool in life. So it really, really helped me. Now it means, Let It Be means um, daily. <laughs> let it be. If I hear the news, let it be. If someone's 
being like, I don't want them to be, let it be, let it be. <laughs> so, uh, and I don't let go. Someone said, well, you let go of the past. Well, you know, I let it be because it happened. And it may be triggered again, but now when I'm triggered, it's less and less and less. I was at a full-on funeral on Thursday. I love living in the barrio because I got to walk to St. Genevieve and walk to the cemetery and walk home. And it triggered some past experiences of death and dying, but it, I didn't let it uh, get me. I let it be. Like, okay, that was a memory. That's just a memory. I don't have to fall apart and make eight, 18 phone calls and say, I'm in PTSD. I just, I was for a moment. And that comes from believing that I can change my energy. I can change my experience the moment I decide to lift the frequency of my thinking. Because thinking is magnetic. And that used to be really horrible news when I heard that people are your thoughts coming back at you. It wasn't good news for a while. It's like, in fact, I did a class when I was burned out at the end of my time in L.A. And the, the class was just uh, not with it at all, not with it at all, and kind of hostile. And so the, my assistant drove me home, and I said, you attracted them. <laughs> I didn't want to own it. It's like, oh, what did me attract to this? So it's, a, it's hardball. It's hardball. And uh, I like to study what people I... I learned from study, like I love reading the Torah and the Bible because that's what Jesus studied. He was a rabbi. And I love studying what Ernest Holmes studied. I, I try to do a lot of that. I was told in another church I was in not to speak about Buddhism <laughs> or Hinduism because it wasn't science of mind. So I brought the book, uh, what's it called? Uh, Letters of Holmes. Yeah. And it, it mentions Hinduism and Buddhism, so I got to be right. But, but um, I love studying what people study, and I'm going to go back to this thing called you. Um, a student here in Las Cruces gave this to me. It was secondhand. She found it. It had a cover and stuff. It says Ernie Phillips, and he was a colleague. He was a minister in L.A. This was at COAS. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So, um, okay, so it begins, this thing called you... It was the first time my higher self was described. I couldn't believe this could be me. You know, all the beautiful promises you read, Edward, all the wonderful truth that couldn't apply to me, but I loved my minister so much and um, her class so much, I just kept on keeping on. It wasn't going to happen for me, but I wanted it to happen for everybody else. I'm stupid. Okay, so it says, you, like all others, are seeking the joy of living. That's the way he starts. I never even heard that. I never heard about joyful living. My parents were Episcopalians, and I just didn't get it. You know, I didn't get this man and all this brocade and stuff, blah, 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 like that. I, I, I don't get it. But anyway, I do love the Bible. And uh, I'm, although I'm not a Christian, I read the book of John every morning for decades. And the Bhagavad Gita. And... The Bhagavad Gita also saved my life during the days of learning about <clears throat> how bodies drop but people live. So this is a quote from the Gita. It really helped me detach and it helped me understand how important service is because he always says serve others without attachment to the outcome, without an agenda, just to serve for the joy of getting away from yourself and actually making it better for someone. Like the, the uh, kitchen and the social halls all set up for us. Like little elves came in and did it because I didn't see Sharon. <laughs> anyway, um, volunteers are so important, aren't they? Jennifer knows that being a minister is like not, not easy sometimes. Okay. So the Gita says, one must deliver himself with the help of his mind. With the help of his mind and not degrade himself which I was so good at hammering at myself and doing reruns and reruns, not degrade himself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. And when I read that, it just knocked me out. It's like, oh, I can choose between my mind putting my hands around my throat or reaching out and helping someone. It's all it begins here. It was just so hard to get. 
and I've been teaching it for, you know, over three decades, and I'm finally getting it. You know how they say you teach what you need to learn? I'm really good at up, up, upping. So, and it also says, as a strong wind sweeps away a boat in the water, even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. Just one of the senses. You know, the, the Bhagavad Gita used this chariot and the horses as a metaphor of life. And the, there are five horses. And it's hilarious. The, the, the painting, I'm going to move over here. <laughs> we made a deal. <laughs> There's five horses, and each one has a breastplate, one with a nose, one with a mouth, one with a hand, one with an ear, one with a, what did I miss? Touch, hand. Okay, so, and if one of those horses gets, gets loose, it's Baskin and Robbins for me. If the, <laughs> mouth, if the mouth takes charge, if the ear wants to listen to bad news and then talk to someone about it and make it wrong and criticize and judge. If I let go of that rein, it's trouble too. But the mind has the reins. The mind has the reins. The soul is the passenger. It just goes with us, just as it said, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. But I mean, so terrified at times when it was in my, my buggy. <laughs> terrifying rides, uh, unnecessarily twisted roads. So um, the mind is in charge, but there's something much bigger and better than just our minds. The mind is part of the brain, and the brain is just fascinating. I just read something that might interest you. Um, for epilepsy, these um, doctors, <laughs> I'm whistling through my new teeth, <laughs> so it is. Um, <laughs> still getting used to them. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. Oh, the brain. So for epilepsy, they cut the corpus callosum, the connector of the hemispheres. And so then they talked to each side. And the left side, they said, move. And the person got up and moved. And then it said to the left side, it said, why did you move? And it said, oh, I was going in the house for a glass of water. And that's that, how we interpret something. We make something up. Instead of just saying, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I was going in the house. Just a big lie. Just interpreting, you know, and interpretation is everything. It's how we interpret. Um, I hope you can interpret me happily today because I dress for joy. Sometimes I dress to be noticed, clearly. But I dress for joy, and I found seersucker for the summer. And I don't know about you guys, but we got seersucker pajamas in the summer. And they were heaven. And seersucker uh, sundresses, crisp little sundresses. So um, this makes me very happy. And I have a waist. It was hard work, but I have a waist now. So <laughs> I am my outfit today. And I have dog paw earrings. And that's really me because dogs, they're my life. They're my joy. So the mind is hard to control. And the last thing I'm going to tell you about the Gita saying something. It says, um, the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, very strong. To subdue, I think, is the more difficult than controlling the wind. That's Krishna saying it, and then he, you know, then he tells us how to live. It's a, it's a great handbook for living, the Bhagavad Gita. It's only, you know, I have big ones and little ones. I have like 20 different translations, but it's really just 18 little chapters. It's just a little book. It's not. <clears throat> so, um, and I have. I'm going to talk about a one of the Upanishads this morning. And I have four of those, and I love comparative studying in the morning because I say, well, how did Aurobindo, how did he translate it? And how did Eknath S. Warren, if you're familiar with Eknath S. Warren, you know he's a lovely, lovely professor from Berkeley. He was um, small from India, and he wore camel hair berets and uh, cashmere uh, brown um, turtleneck and a camel hair jacket. And he was just lovely. Lovely, lovely. And his translations of the Gita and the Upanishads are fabulous because he's so human. You know, he was a respected professor. But he says at a time in his life, he really wanted more. He had that urge. Ernest Holmes talked about in the first chapter, he talked, we all have an urge. We all have a creative urge. And it's to honor that, isn't it, as much as we can. I honored it with art and scared myself silly and put it down. You know, because I didn't want to win. I was afraid to succeed or fail. Anyway, he decided he'd been studying for years and years and years, and he was in the 
Berkeley, UC Berkeley library and says, I want more. And he said, um, I read on, he, re he opened the Upanishad, he said, I read on, image after image arrested me, awe-inspiring images, scarcely understood but pregnant with promised meaning, which caught at my heart as a familiar voice tugs at the edge of awareness when you are struggling to wake up. That's how I felt when I first read The Science of Mind. It was like, oh my God, can this be true? Can I relate to this? And it was like, can I be a practitioner? Can I be a minister? And it took me from the laundromat to the pulpit in six years. So um, it means a lot to me. It really, The Science of Mind means a lot to me. We're talking today about the self, the authentic self that is described in all these books, described really well. But we have to describe it for ourselves. We have to identify our, we have to. It's a good idea, I think, maybe for you. <laughs> and try not to, you should on anybody. Because um, I know you know all this, but I'm just giving you my current interpretation, which might be garbage tomorrow. But today, I really believe in the power within us, and I believe the capital S self is much better than my little s self. Uh, Eckhart Tolle calls it your man-made personality. The Dalai Lama said we're composites of experiences. So to be mad at a person, a composite, is like being mad at a rock. Ain't going to change. <laughs> and it's just a waste of time. So um, I believe I'm a composite, but I don't pay attention to the past composite so much anymore. They're all washed clean, and I can look at them and go, oh, yeah, that was when I was really lost. And it says here, awake, and the Buddha, they said, are you an angel? No. Are you God? No. Are you a, a philosopher? No. What are you? He says, I'm awake. That's all he said. I am awake. And I love writings on the spirit of awakening because we can wake up to capital S self. I wake up to capital S self now. I used to do reruns and hammer up myself in the morning. Now I play Morning Has Broken by Cat Stevens. It's just such a dear, dear song. And then I love um, As My Guitar Gently Weeps because it's, oh, I love George, it's George Harrison looking out in the audiences and seeing the hidden love that no one told you how to unfold your love. I watch from the wings at the uh, stage you're setting and my guitar gently weeps. It's just a, a, a really insightful song. And he knows he can't do anything about it, but he's singing about it. And he was a Krishna devotee. I got to do um, 108 rounds of Hare Krishna with Mukunda, who was with George when he died, a really sweet man. So if you have a low opinion of the Krishnas, maybe rethink it, because they're everything. You know, they're not just annoying people. They're, <laughs> some of them are just giant intellects and giant angel men, you know. So the Mundakya, Mundakya Upanishad is one of the Upanishads. This is Aurobindo. He was one of Ernest Holmes' teachers, and Ernest Holmes loved his work. Maybe you've seen The Divine Life. It's a great book. It's all about living, and one of the lines is, we overcome and overcome until we become. Isn't that cool? So we're going to talk about identification and who you be. And um, I brought little bees for you, and I put them in my dog bowl. It's clean, but... It's so, it's, it's authentic because I have dog earrings, dog bowl, and you get a little bee. And I hope you keep it with you so that you remember who you be. You know, I am capital S self expressing through little else Sandy. Doesn't that make sense? I, there was a, Margaret Brees Whiting was one of our teachers, and she said, um, be self as Teresa is how we say it. Teresa, it's important. <laughs> self as Barry, self as, uh, no, it's called you a different name. Terry, self as Amy, and there was a young man here for a minute, and his name's Leon, and I'm telling you, for him to make it here this morning was just a miracle. Um, he's recovering from almost dying, and it took everything for him to come, and he was in the social hall, and we hugged, and he couldn't stay, but he made it here. He made it here. There was enough of the high self. To, to let him make it here. Amy and I know him real well. He's just a love bug, and almost we almost lost him. So Edward read about the path. You're on a path, right? We're all on a path. A path, not the path. 
a truth, not the truth. And um, this is interesting, I think. Have you seen the movie, The Razor's Edge, the old one that's fantastic, and the new one with um, Bill Murray? It's an amazing, amazing movie. And when he goes to India, it's, it's um, Ramana Maharshi that um, teaches him about life. And this is what Ramana said. He quoted the Upanishad, the Kata Upanishad. He said, let the wise man restrain speech in his mind and mind in self, capital S, and knowledge in the great self. And that again, let man restrain in the self that is at peace. So there's always the self within me that's at peace. Doesn't know about losing weight, doesn't about, know about the mess a dog made, doesn't know anything about anything that I might be reacting to or interpreting and making it bad. Doesn't know anything. So this is it. Arise, awake, find out the great ones and learn of them. For sharp as a razor's edge, hard to traverse, difficult of going is that path, say the sages. So that's where the razor's edge came from and I was so happy to find it. Um, in a book. So Aurobindo's quite a guy, quite a guy. There's a saying in, in Hinduism, the people that study the Upanishads, that you only need the first verse of the Mundakya Upanishad. And so I'm going to read it to you. Om is the imperishable word. Om is the universe. And this is the exposition of Om, the past, the present, and the future. All that was, all that is, all that will be is Om. Likewise, all else that may exist beyond the bounds of time, that too is Om. And it goes on to say <clears throat> that Om is the self. Om, he that knoweth the self and endureth by his self, he who knows the capital S self and enters by his little s self into the self, he knoweth, he knoweth. And um, who is the one that whom there is no other? Oh, okay. Who's essentially is awareness of the self in a single existence in whom all phenomena dissolve, who is calm, who is good, who is the one whom there is no other, him they deem for, he is the self. So we become ourselves. We've been ourself all along, but we might be the small self. I was definitely the small self. Our family was the, we had a blast being physical until addiction took our family to, to smithereens. But we had a blast. We loved nature. We loved each other. We played games. We put on musicals. We really had joy in our life. And uh, when it got rough, I didn't know anything other than my little S self. And it was horrible. And I made up my life from it, from my interpretations of what happened in my past. You know, the pain of the past, fear of the future. Pain of the past, fear of the future. Or right here, right now, I'm enjoying myself, and I hope you are too. So the question is, who are we? Who am I? What's, what's the best version of me that I can be? What dropped? Oh, OK. <laughs> Excuse me. So page 57 in Stillness Speaks. I had it all mapped out. OK. OK, this is it. When you know who you truly are, there is an abiding, alive sense of peace. You could call it joy, because that's what joy is, vibrantly alive peace. It is the joy of knowing yourself at the very life essence before life takes on form. That is the joy of being, of being who you truly are. Isn't that great? I love that. And then he says, you know, give up the names and the labels. And he gives this example of how we, <laughs> how we um, interpret our lives. Just a few sentences. He says, what a miserable day. He didn't have the decency to return my call. She let me down. And he says, or you could say, it is raining. He did not call. I was there. She was not. See the difference? <laughs> I always try to live adjective free. It's impossible. <laughs> Glorious. Great. Wonderful. Anyway, OK. So this is the sign I use in a workshop. And that's where the bees come from, to be you. So just look at that for a moment. And just think of the highest and best that you are. Just think of your high self. Think of yourself as, I am self as Jennifer. I am self as Brenda. 
I am self as. I'm temporarily in a body. Who I am will not die, does not suffer. If I tap into that, if I let the high self lift my frequency of thought, I'm going to have wonderful experiences. I'm going to enjoy myself. Or I'm going to quickly get over if PTSD ambushes me at a gravesite. I don't have to fall down and cry and hope someone notices that I used to work with death. <laughs> so I used to want people to notice me. You know, as I said, I used to dress for attention and showing off. And now I tell people in a recovery program because people that look good and happy aren't usually popular for people that are absolutely miserable and just learning how to live and breathing is hard. Like our friend Leon couldn't stay. But if he just keeps at it and lets us love him and fan his inner flame, I call myself an inner flame fanner. I just want your fan to catch flame. I mean, your flame to catch fire and deal with it whatever you want, whether you're a Buddhist, atheist, whatever, but just get your f flame fan, right? We all need someone to fan our flame. These three are flame fanners. This, uh, Teresa made sense out of life, and life just didn't make sense at all to me with her amazing authentic writing. So <clears throat> if you'll just take a moment and look at your little B and maybe keep it in your coin purse or your pocket and the rhinestones may drop off but my rhinestones are dropping off too so it's not a big deal to <laughs> the physical to change. It doesn't mean a thing. So um, let's just take a moment like who are you? Who who, what's the most joyful version of you you can think of today? What's the most joy? What, what's your favorite color? What color makes you sing? It's yellow in the spring for me. What's your favorite flower? Just think about things you love. That's who you are. Things that you didn't create. You didn't create the sky. You didn't create the mountains. But they sing to your soul because that's where you came from too. We have the same father. And then when you're in the upset, and you're, when you're really in the uh, situation, call for backup. The backup is right here. It's like, backup, I need backup. I'm, I'm blowing it here. And the, the large self says, you're OK. You've always been OK. You're OK now. You always will be OK. Tune in to where this isn't happening and go through it on a higher frequency. Call for backup. Make sense? Okay, well, I hope you get a good, joyful picture of you because I love looking at each and every one of you, every, every single one of you. I think the, the sound and video people, and if anyone's watching and wants a little bee, they're really cute. They're gold, and they have um, enamel black and white stripes and rhinestone wings. So uh, if you want one, get my phone number from Edward, and I'll figure out how to bring you one or send you one because they're very cute. So, and I thank Amy for ordering them for me because I can't do that stuff. So I ordered something from Hong Kong and they blocked my credit card. I said, it's my money. I want my money. Well, we have to check. We have to check. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, be careful if you're ordering from Hong Kong. <laughs> I hope it comes. Okay. Thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for giving me your attention and your smiles and the beautiful looks in your eyes. I see self as you very clearly today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Sandy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with, the, with the joy in our hearts, knowing that we can laugh at ourselves, we can have fun in a Sunday service. We can get a greater idea of who we are. Just by that intelligence, that mind, that capital S mind moving through us, lifting our thoughts to higher interpretations of what is and what is not. Can you accept yourself as you are and as you are not right now? As I am, as I am not, I'm doing my best. And I allow the greater energy living through me to lift my thoughts to a frequency of joy for the rest of the day. And there's no need for me to be lowered down. And if I do, I know what to do. Call for backup. That's the affirmative prayer. Amen. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Sandy. That was amazing. 
You like your little bee? <laughs> I was oh. um, I was concerned about I, I didn't know what to do next, um, but today I've had two amazing talks, one from Jennifer and and one from Sandy, and I'm so grateful to both of you and also to this church and to Barry and to everyone. I've known Sandy for many years, and when we talk about PTSD, it's it's no joke. Mm -mm. You know, it's, we, we were, there was some real, and Sandy had a huge, uh, she had a big ministry, and mostly it was dying young people. And uh, I knew her through that ministry. We worked, I worked on my, my little side of things, but Sandy was amazing. And so to find her here in God knows where is Las Cruces. How the hell is that? So anyway, but we're here somehow. So I'd like to um, sing this song for Jennifer and Sandy today and for all of us about being, um, I wrote this, this is the first song I wrote when I got to Las Cruces, but it's, it's changed, it's gone through some changes. So it's, it's called Cowgirls. And I'm very proud of the women in ministry because it wasn't the easiest path to forge, as you well know. We love our men, we love them. Mm -hmm. But enough already. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, how much do you need? I mean, really. So anyway, it's great to have women friends and, and women ministers. And this song is called Cowgirls. It sounds a lot like tuning, but it's, it's a, wait, okay. <laughs> The desert air is sweet tonight Our faces glow in the campfire's light We can feel God's hand Stir the Rio Grande as it rolls on by As it rolls on by our hearts are grateful and they're free Though they're ragged and worn as they might be We know it's not a lot But it's what we've got to offer thee To offer thee We are cowgirls through and through doing what we cowgirls do having us a load of fun while we even your song to we leave our men to tend the home it's good for them to spend some time alone For when we return We know the flames of love will burn so bright Will burn so bright We are cowgirls through and through Doing what we can girls do having us a load of fun while we even your song to the sun breaks through the ruby haze we embrace then we go our separate ways with the hearts entwined by the great design we know as love we know as love we are cowgirls through and through doing what we cowgirls do having us a load of fun 
Why we even your song? Why we even your song? Oh Lord, lady. Wow, what a day. Uh, we, I'll go through this a few more times and then we'll get used to it. But we're going to pass the collection in person again because we sort of have allowed it to become an afterthought in terms of what it really means. So uh, go ahead, Rebecca, and uh, see what we get here. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know. Everybody may have already. Go ahead and pass. Oh, we're still waiting. Yeah. We have plenty of time. We, we, as I said, we've stuck it in the back because of COVID. But what it represents is so much more than just a basket in the back. Because what we've come to know is that the divine flow is through each and every one of us and as with our contributions we acknowledge that flow we give thanks for that flow so Rebecca thank you for doing that again today I mean get over here and if you want to we just uh, we hold our hands out because we know that this physical basket is overflowing with all the joy and the great things the gifts that that spirit wants us to have this abundance that is ours as we even place it in our mind it is abundant we are abundant this community is abundant every one of us here is abundant and we know that as we give from our heart and from our own knowledge of our abundance that it is multiplied and we know that this abundance supports this church here and supports the greater community as we tithe to all the other communities, to the greater Las Cruces, to the special charities, because we are acknowledging that one flow through each and every one of us. Our source is the source. There's no lack in the source. And so it is. Thank you. And there are a number of folks, have you been mentioned already, by name almost, but today it's Brenda and Edwin who are supporting us from the technical side of things, and we thank you for that. And we couldn't do it without you. And Zoom was a wonderful thing, but also it adds two other people to our Sunday service volunteers, <laughs> you know, so anyway, it's great. And those of you in Zoom land, we thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate your attendance, and we know that you are a part of the same energy that we've created here. And we love you all. And now, now please stand if you're able to recite with me the benediction, and that will be followed by our peace song. Spirit, in the midst of us is mighty. Joy, peace, and eternal life are nature and flow through us into the world, and so it is.